oh, what a pleasure for me. <laughs> and what an amazing group of people this is. I, I had the experience of the love and care of your spirit team for the last months as everything came together and then a, an amazing day yesterday. And I just, I feel so blessed and being back in this gorgeous valley, uh, as you know, that would do anyone's spirit good. So I, I want to, I want to share with you an understanding and a way of enhancing what we call spiritual connection. One of the things that, that we share that brings us into, well, okay, why you come out of the cold Sunday day? <laughs> what part of yourself are you seeking to nurture or care for? And it really is, this is that time when we focus and remember that I am a spiritual being. I, I have a spiritual nature and part of the fulfillment of my being is enhancing and strengthening and developing that connection. And there's, there's beautiful ways through our spiritual journeys we've learned to do that. You know, there's prayer, there's meditation, there's beautiful renewal. I, uh, not all that long ago I had the experience of saying, okay, time for some renewal. And it, it was in the fall, so I said, okay, I'm going to head to Maine while the colors change and found a little cabin on the lake and, you know, a beautiful external setting, but then I chose that place also because it happened to be your Ernest Holmes's cabin. <laughs> a beautiful place to do a little renewal. So, and, and we know, we know, the, we know uh, you know, what I know standing here is that this is, this is a group of people who regularly meditate and have, have prayer lives. But the, what was so meaningful for me was discovering that that, that was only a, a particular part and practice of the experience of spiritual connection. And in what unfolded as I, as I looked beyond the teachings that were a part of the new thought world of, of unity in which uh, I studied and, and taught, and I realized that there was a part, a potential for our spiritual protection that was much greater than we were accessing. That spirit, deep spiritual connection was right there. So it should be there any moment I needed it. So I want to share an experience with you that, that speaks to this greater capacity for spiritual connection. And it's, it's the experience of my son Peter. Now, Peter uh, and his wife live in uh, L.A. And as a young couple, they were, you know, struggling with putting together the finances for their little family and the things that uh, they wanted to do with their lives. Uh, Julia, uh, Peter's wife, was uh, had been doing some temp work and got the opportunity to be hired by a financial services company and uh, that she'd been working with. It was, it was a wonderful salary and yet, wow, here, here was this fulfillment of, of their, their desire, their plan, but because she'd been working with them, she was very aware of why there was an opening. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so dysfunctional in that particular department that nobody could stay there. <laughs> and she's going, do I want to say yes? Yeah, do I want to take this? I take the money, but can I, can I handle this? And, and so Julia comes home and she's sharing this with Peter. And, and she, she's really, really worried. You know, she's just caught in this, this turmoil. And what happened for Julia was she, she had some anxiety patterns and, and the depth of her worry and concern began to stimulate those and she was feeling more and more upset. Oh, so Peter's there, there with her and Peter had uh, joined me at some times when I was with the Institute of Art Man. And what there's scientific discovery showed was that by accessing the heart, we can literally stop the worry, the anxiety within a few minutes. 
And so, and from that place, then we connect with a deeper wisdom. And that's what Julie was so needing. She was needing that wisdom. She needed that clear guidance on what to do. And she was caught in this anxiety and stress. And, you know, Peter had this wonderful understanding of how to, how to help her let go of that. Now, this, this was not the first time that uh, Julie had, uh, you know, become worried or upset about something. And, and Peter had, uh, you know, taken those steps as that loving husband is to, to help her uh, take those steps before, you know, and make that change. And Peter had learned that he could be her heart math coach or he could be her husband, but he couldn't be both. <laughs> I see many of the husbands in the room. No, that's okay. Yeah, we understand. Um, okay. And so he realized he, he knew how to take away this anxiety, this tension. Uh, he studied the science. He had the techniques. He was skilled in it. And he could do a thing. And so as she was upset and his concern for her, he began to, to feel powerless and upset. If you, if you have someone that you really love or care for, and they're, they're in that struggle and you can't help them, but you care so much. So as Peter experiences powerlessness and frustration, he suddenly realizes, well, I can't help Julia, but I can't help me. <laughs> so he took a step. Now it's a, it's a step that comes out of the science of uh, the Heart Math Institute. But one of the reasons I spent so many years with the Heart Math Institute was I recognized that may come out of science. But what their con the connection that it's establishing is pure, direct spiritual connection. So Peter took that step. And the, and the first part of that step was to connect with his heart. Focus on his heart. Because the heart is that doorway through which we connect with the depth of the spiritual self. So he made that connection and then he took the he took the next step which turns on the power that flows to our heart. Now our biophysical part has, part has the power to change our body. And so suddenly our body, instead of supporting the emotions with all their hormones and the nervous responses, is, is there in support of entering into the spiritual connection. And so he, he took that step and went through that change. And then with that sense of spiritual connection made, he could ask how to respond to Julia. <coughs> and that beautiful spiritual wisdom responded to him. Simply said, ask her.
said, the spirit within me is all wisdom. So when we experience that greater level of understanding, of, of connection, of awareness, of going forth with our, the situations before us in an effective way, we have touched that wisdom. That is the spirit within us. So I can look at Peter's experience and say, that's spiritual connection. But one of the delights for me in discovering our men, if we, if we look at the great teachings of any of uh, the world's religions, eventually they come back to love and heart. Now, I will admit, there's lots of stuff around it. But at the core, that's what we're all. All these different cultures and styles and structures, that's what we're reaching for. That connection with that point in us that is that higher harmony and wisdom and power. My understanding is that, well, first of all, being in this group of people, I know that you understand your spiritual beings. And you made this decision to incarnate into the third dimensional realm, realm and have this uh, human experience. And some of us have figured that's a pretty good, fun decision. And some of us are still quite thinking. <laughs> okay, but we're here. Okay. And we're experiencing this third dimensional realm. When we did that, and we chose to take these human bodies, these instruments through which we could live this in this third dimension, Okay, we got a default mechanism to interpret this dimension. A marvelous mechanism. It's called the brain. Now the brain looks out at the third dimension around us and it takes all that data in and it figures out. And so it's through that that we're able to live here. It's through that that we're able to interact and decide and have, it has the brilliant ability to look and analyze and, and just do amazing things. Brilliant gift. And it is a beautiful third dimensional tool. It is not who we are. You had great wisdom before you ever did that. Okay, I'm going to do the body thing. Okay? When you got that brain going, it took us a while to get it activated. You know, we had to start with the noises and, you know, eventually we got crawling and talking and learning and, you know, all that stuff. But we, we got it working pretty good. It's not who you really are. When you're done with this brain and its body, who you are can try on going with all the wisdom that you have gained from this journey. Now, you have complete access to that part of our being, the spiritual nature of our being, right here in this third dimension. But it takes a choice. Because it is not the default mechanism the brain is. So my brain is going to figure out what to do. My, Peter's brain is going to sit there and go, well, she's upset, I can't do this. Uh, you know, I can't answer a question, I don't know what to do. His brain figured out the problem. But it couldn't give him the wisdom to solve it. That is a deeper wisdom. And that comes from the spiritual self. And that happens through spiritual connection. And spiritual connection takes place through the heart. There's a physical heart that we use to open that connection, but the connection is with the spiritual heart. That center of love that puts us in touch with all that is unfolding and its purpose for Julia and Peter and their family, for everything that was there. So 
So that is what I'm looking at. But how do we do that? How do we make that connection? When we need it. And I love going off to retreat cabins. But I don't have retreat cabins in the middle of things when there's a problem. <laughs> That's when I want connection. Okay, so let me share another, another experience. And I think it's a little easier to sometimes follow how we do something through, through experiences. So this was, uh, this was when uh, my wife and I had moved from this beautiful valley and we were in another uh, beautiful set of mountains. We were in the Santa Cruz Mountains in California in a redwood forest. And from our house we had a long uh, lane and little one lane roads to get off the off the mountain and across this long one lane lane bridge and up to the highway where we head off to work and things in our lives. So one morning we were we were doing that uh, and we were taking two cars because after work Catherine was going to go one direction and I was going to go another. So we we headed off. We both worked at uh, Hartmouth at that time. So uh, we were headed to the same place, but different afterwards. But we headed down and. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of leading us there. We go across this beautiful one-lane bridge over this little mountain stream coming down the river, uh, off the mountain. And uh, I get to the end of the bridge. I'm just about there, and this little Volkswagen pulls up to the end of the bridge and stops right there, blocking the end of the bridge. So, you know, I figure, well, they just weren't paying attention. They'll move out of the way. So I, go up there and stop in front of the boat so I get away. And it just sits there. So I thought, no, I'm, I'm, I'm impatient, you know. It's, I've taken me a moment at times to figure things out. So this, you know, it'll work. It just sits there. Now, in, in, in that prior incarnation before ministry, I was a lawyer. Okay, but the law is not difficult in this. The person on the bridge has the right of way. That's the only way the bridge works. It's a one-lane bridge. So if somebody's coming, you can get out of the way so they can get across, and it's your turn. It's not hard. Just sit there. So I'm, you know, well, I, am I going to have to get out to go over and explain to this person and need to move out of the way so I can get across the bridge. I can't get to work. <laughs> and then I think, you know, I'm maybe feeling a little frustrated and irritated at this situation. It might be a good moment to check my heart. So I take those steps for that spiritual connection because it's not the physical heart I'm checking. It's the spiritual heart. It's that part of me that connects to this beautiful wisdom that we all have. So I take it, bring my attention to it, just touch, take a moment to just pretend to breathe through it. I just focus right there. Now that gets me to the doorway. But to go through the doorway, what the science shows us is there is one particular dynamic that changes this instrument so that instead of supporting my frustration, irritation, and sense of moral superiority over <laughs> somebody who won't move out of the way, that changes my heart, it changes my body. And then I am connected with my spiritual nature, my spiritual heart. So then that, that change, one of the things that we know again and again, those of you that were with me in the uh, seminar yesterday. Remember on the slides we were putting up, again on the, again on that slide, the label at the top was 
appreciation. Because there is a feeling. It has to be a feeling. But when we feel that, when we feel appreciation, our heart changes. And from that change, then we are able to access that spiritual self. I'm going to take it just just a moment for those of you that were with us yesterday and uh, remind you that we saw a slide with the frequencies created by the electromagnetic field of the heart and the change of those frequencies from essentially a, a, a view of uh, frequencies that were creating static and barrier to frequencies when that that, that love was felt and the heart changed that became clear and distinct. So our understanding and what, what the reason, my understanding of the heart math research is that this instrument literally opens to the deeper levels we can access within ourselves. We change our receptivity. And there's many ways that we can kind of practice that. But that simple thing, feeling appreciation, now it's not just appreciation. Appreciation is what's what I used there. It was a simple, simple thing to get to. It's very effective. But the thing that really causes the change is any of the feelings that are part of love. We're back at a core spiritual principle. Love transforms. I don't think Jesus taught love because he wanted people to be nice. <laughs> and he taught love because that was how we connected into the spiritual self. We really were. That's how we woke up and went forward. So I, fortunately, the feeling of appreciation was very easy. I am sitting on a river on a bridge in the mountains in the morning in the redwoods. The sun is coming through these beautiful trees. It's gorgeous! <laughs> I can look up there and go, oh, wow, yeah. Now, now let me stop. I, I, I've thought appreciation many times. It doesn't work. Thought's a beautiful thing, but it's not transformative. It's supportive, but it's not transformative. The feeling is transformative, very clear from the, from the science. But when I felt that appreciation for this beautiful place, oh, I could feel my body change. Then I could ask for that wisdom. And it was real clear and direct. It just said, back up. <laughs> Now, there was a little bit of me kind of wanted to argue with you. Know, <laughs> back up, you know. It's your wife. Okay, she'll do what you ask. So I turned around and waved and she backed up and I backed up. It took about a minute and a half. The car went by and we were on our way. I had no need in my being to educate someone on the law of courtesy on a bridge. That is not important to who I am. Okay? That minute and a half, I can take. I was on my way, but the change. You know, I love the wisdom. I, I believe Ernest Holmes. When you get that wisdom, that is your spiritual self-expressing. But that's not all you get. What I got was I drove. I was in harmony with the world I was in and where I was going. I no longer had given my power to someone else's behavior to determine how I felt. That centered in who we are. Connected with this beautiful force that guides us and takes us. I no 
know what the problem is. And the problem for most of us is that's too soon. <laughs> Things are less heavy, the 
It's a little lighter. And I share that with you because that's part of the recognition of the movement of your spiritual self in and through your being. That spiritual power literally lifts our energy. It lifts our vision. Because we are spiritually connected. And yes, we can take, when, when it's an issue, uh, a challenge like for Peter or on that, on that bridge, yeah, we can then access that wisdom, call it forth. But the truth is, most of the time, it's just the most meaningful, joyous way to live. You, as the spiritual being you really are, walking through this world, through that feeling of appreciation, allowing that full, gorgeous, wide, 